wine and cheese, peanut butter and jelly, ham, and burger. People have been pairing for centuries, but have you ever paired a beer with comics? Hello everyone, Steve from Cantu Comics here, welcoming you to something a little different this time. I love reading comics, but sometimes you like to have a little companion drink in your hand. After a long day, you need to loosen up a little before diving right into an intense storyline. I want to let my inhibitions fade as I slip into an immersive comic reading session. Today, I will be pairing a bottle of Blind Pig by Russian River with Matt Murdock, better known as Daredevil. It's pretty obvious why this IPA is being paired, as the name implies a blind pig complete with a caricature of a pig with a walking stick and dark glasses. And you know, Daredevil is a blind superhero. So let's start off with some aroma and tasty notes. Oh yeah, so I'm gonna use my little three ounce tasting uh, sniffer. Oh yeah. Okay, kind of right off the bat, definitely hoppy. I definitely smell the hops. A uh, little, little citrusy, kind of some some pine, Let's taste it a little bit. Looks very copper. Oh yeah, definitely hops. <laughs> it's the first thing that hits me is hops. Uh, yeah, definitely, like I mentioned, it did smell citrusy. Definitely get a citrus taste. It does have some, a little bit of like pine trees, little fruity notes. The finish is definitely dry. A little bitter, not too bad. I mean, for an IPA, that's pretty typical. Nice and clean. Also, this is fresh out of the normal fridge, so it's probably around 35 degrees. So it may, the flavor profiles may change a little bit as it warms up. So yeah, it's been sitting for 30 seconds or so. It's still. Still about the same notes. Yeah, very good. <coughs> oh, definitely the, passes the burp taste. That's great. So yeah, so one thing to note in case you're not familiar with Russian River Brewery, that this guy here, this is Blind Pig, and they're known for Plenty the Elder, which is you know, when you look at like Beer Advocate or any of the like top like review sites for beer, it's literally, it's a top 10 beer overall. And you know, there's thousands and thousands of beer, actually thousands of breweries around. So for them to have a top tier beer, and this is basically the single IPA version of that. So Plenty of the Elder is just a lot more robust, a lot more hoppier. Uh, this guy, this, this, this tastes great. <laughs> like uh, I can drink this. You know, all day, definitely in the summer. You know, I'm more of a stout guy. Now it's winter time, but you know, California, it's still pretty warm. So this, this will go all season. Okay. Yeah, it's starting to warm up a little. I'm getting a little, obviously the hops are gonna come out even more later. It's starting to get a little more of the pine but I don't think there's any more, any other flavor profiles that I've noticed. Yeah, very good. So one thing to note, definitely, you know, as you have your little companion drink, mm, yeah, that's good. Uh, you don't want to get too buzzed because, you know, myself, I'm a purist. So I like to actually read the physical old school books. If I have the trade paperback, sure, I'll read that. Um, but you know, normally I just go online and read my books, so I don't even really touch these. But to get that true experience, you know, you definitely need to pop it open. 
Um, so definitely take a note, don't get too buzzed because especially if it's a key book, which some of these I'll show you, uh, you know, you don't, you don't want to mess with them. Like if it's a really, really valuable book, you probably want to wear gloves. Uh, but these are not, they're, they're still technically reader copies. So, you know, some of them are pretty nice, but uh, for the most part, you have to be pretty careful and you don't want to spill any of this guy on there. So now that we've got our pairing synced, what is the perfect Daredevil storyline to enjoy? I like to focus on Frank Miller's run leading to the death of Elektra in issue 181 and the issues immediately right after where he's coping with the loss. So let's go ahead and get started on those guys. I have a handful of Frank Miller's uh, Daredevil run. So the first one that I have in my long box is I, I have some more somewhere, but right now my box is a little unorganized. So from, these are like the ones I've had longer. So you can also tell here that <laughs> my bags and boards are, they're a little old, so they're a little warped. So I believe these books, I actually got these about 10 years ago. So you can see on the price tag here, got these at Captain Nemo's and San Luis Obispo. So this one's $1.99, like can't find this for $1.99 anymore, even in this condition. I mean, it, there's definitely some color breaks. You know, you're still looking at like at least a six and a half, seven, maybe seven and a half. So, so this one right here, this is issue 175. Uh, I won't read this one. I'm, I'm gonna lead into issue 181. Um, and then that one I'll show you guys, you know, leading up to, you know, the, uh, the events that happened between Bullseye and Elektra. So yeah, so this is issue 175, very nice. And it's not the end yet, it's leading to it. And here's issue 176. So a nice cover with Daredevil and Elektra. Uh, for some reason she's purple, so I guess it's at nighttime. So, you know, back then coloring uh, techniques were not up to par to current ones. So they had to use a lot of flat colors. So their palette was very limited. So they used a purple to kind of distinguish that was a nighttime, um, you know, nighttime color shade. But, you know, Daredevil's iconic red, so he still needs to stay red even at night. And here we have issue 177. Uh, looks like a brood, but I don't think that they had the brood going on <laughs> at this point. But this is issue 177. Uh, these are also, these are pretty old books. This is from 1980. So, um, you know, these are actually pretty good condition here. So these are still part of the Frank Miller run, his initial run. So over here now I've got issue 178 and um, I have two copies. Looks like I have the direct edition and the newsletter, or I'm sorry, newsstand edition. Pretty nice book. Um, this one here is in, looks like this one I paid $4 for a while back and then this one's in fine condition and it's actually, it doesn't break any color. So this could be pressed. Um, I don't think this one's worth that much at the moment. It's still part of his run. So it's still, a, it's still pretty desirable. And then over here on these guys, so this is actually a Frank Miller cover. So you could tell the artwork started to change a little bit. So Miller was doing the insides. He was doing the story, the inside pencils and the covers. So this one, 179, it's, it's got some nice little bends on here. So this one had a lot of love, <laughs> but yeah, you can see it's, you know, it's ramping up. It's, it's getting there. Issue 179. And here is 181. So it's also a double-sized issue. Uh, this one I also paid two dollars, and uh, for being such the iconic issue, it's actually I'm not sure why they only charged two dollars, because there's only a few little color breaks on here. Not too bad. So let me uh, let's go ahead and crack this one open. Well, first you know let's got to toast a little bit. <sighs> yeah, it's definitely warming up. So this is going to be a very nice pairing. Yeah, you can still smell the ink on here. So this has been in a bag for a while. Definitely someone read it. Had a little bit of love to it. Oh, there are some finger bends up on the top but 
that could also be pressed out if needed. So yeah, so I can, I'll show you guys on the B-roll too, but I'll kind of navigate towards where everything starts getting good. So again, this is also a, this is like a double, a double issue size. So the cover price was a dollar. I think they were 50 cents around this time. Yeah, 60 cents. So you got a pretty good deal. You got double pages and you saved, you know, 10 cents. Uh, but yeah, um, don't have time for this video to read everything leading up here, but I'll get pretty close so I can start to... Actually, the good thing is I'm starting to feel a little bit of a buzz. So that will get me ready for, you know, the heartbreak. Hmm. Oh yeah, I remember here. Okay, we're getting here. So yeah, right now there's foggy. Yeah, we're leading up right into right into the final confrontation with Bullseye. He's saying in college, you are Matt's girl, Electra. And then uh, Foggy looks like he has no clue what's going on. I believe this was Foggy, it looks like Foggy. And then she's just saying, get out of here. She's like, she knows what's happening. This is the end, final battle. They're staring each other down. Like this, this is classic Frank Miller. Like here, we don't even have dialogue anymore. This is just straight action. We're just going to town here. All the acrobatics. Yeah, this is, this is really iconic. They don't make comics like this anymore. <laughs> so we're getting there. All right. She slashed his cheek. They're just trading blows. And it looks like, you know, Electra, she had the upper hand for a, a lot of this, but you know, Bullseye, man, he, he can't miss. So he's got his deck of cards. So, yep, he's got his piece of spades right at the throat. It's a shame. I mean, I wasn't collecting comics when this came out. I mean, I can only imagine if I was a kid and I was reading this, I would just be, oh my God. Like, cause they were really pumping Electra, like even after this, like she was popular and she still continued to have a lot of popularity throughout the years. And there's just Bullseye is just messing with her. Then he gives her that final lethal blow. That's, that's so iconic where you see her being stabbed and it's going through her clothing. It's like, yeah, you look at it, you're like, mm, yeah. Her, her fingers are buckling. Like, yeah, that's fatal. You know, surprisingly, she's still able to crawl around. You know, Bullseye's putting on his jacket. He's like, yep, yep, you're done. Go in, she's crawling. I mean, this is, it's, it's a tragedy. And there she goes. First dialogue is just her calling for Matt. And then he, she just, dies in his arms and of course Bullseye's there watching and then of course like I said I don't have time to read through all this or look through all of it but you know this is even if you've seen the TV show they they go through this whole thing so you know he's gloating to Kingpin they're talking he's just like what do you mean what do you mean Matt Murdock is Daredevil blah 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 so then they're going back and forth and then here comes Matt Murdock for revenge. You know, he set up a dummy and he, you know, he tricked Bullseye pretty good. So, you know, that's what you gotta do. I mean, he's, he's Bullseye, man, he's accurate. He's not gonna miss. So you gotta make sure like you, you got the upper hand. And then there goes Daredevil, you know, more iconic panels. Oh, some ads. So yeah, just trading blows, boom, boom, boom. Oh yeah, here it is. So yeah, they're on that tightrope, balancing. He's got bullseyes about to fall. You won't save me like before. Kill you, I'll kill. Ugh. Crack, dead. Yeah, crazy thing, Kingpin just disowns him. <laughs> Burns all of his files. Yeah, and then we get, you know, Matt, Obviously, he's starting to grieve. He's—he definitely. I mean, he—he 
he had some revenge, so he, he got his vengeance. He's at his at a grave site. And then I believe it finishes off with um, yeah, Bullseye in the hospital, just talking to himself that he's coming back. Yeah, so I mean, normally, I mean, you know, obviously I'm on my channel here, so I'm just kind of sharing with you guys, you know, nice little beer pairing. So obviously this one became more of an Electra issue, but obviously this is, you know, this is literally regarded as one of the best, like best storylines ever from Daredevil. And obviously every single movie and TV series iteration, everything revolves around, um, you know, Electra, Bullseye, and Daredevil. So I wanted to share with you guys, you know, this book here, and as this pairing was going, you know, this just made perfect sense. So to continue on, you know, if you were reading this full full line, you know, you got to take your sip. You know, I, I wanted to be immersed. I had to kind of rush through it a little bit. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now that that's that's a quality burp right there, because that those notes afterwards it just tasted like quality. You know, if you drink some crappy beer like Corona, you burp. You know, it's repulsive, <laughs> or even something like natural light or just you know garbage beer that you had in college. No, you burped and you're just like disgusted. But this was like a satisfying burp. You know, you did it and you're just like, okay, like this was high quality hops. Like it's, it didn't taste bad or anything. It was just nice. So yeah, so for myself, I would continue reading. So here we go on this one, we have so the immediate issue right after 182, you know, they show off the cover. He's still there with the grave. He, he's starting to grieve. You know, he, he got rid of Bullseye, but you know, this, this is a really long process of grieving. So yeah, another iconic cover, another iconic issue. And then just kind of continues along. So this is 185. Um, how many issues is that? So yeah, this was three issues later. So I definitely have a lot of holes in this gap. Um, so he's just kind of continuing on. You know, obviously I said I would have to read these online to kind of get the full story. Um, but at least to show you guys, you know, actually this is this is pretty nice too. I don't I don't really see any color bends on here either. And this one I spent two bucks. Well, this is the old the old sticker label. This was also from Captain Nemo Comics. So I don't know if any of you are familiar with San Luis Obispo, but they're a pretty big comic book store. And this label is from the 80s. So this was priced from like, you know, the 80s and this book's just been sitting in their boxes there forever. So I've, I'll probably do an episode in the future about just my haul that I've gotten over the years, like literally like 20 years worth of just going to that comic shop and just going in their back bins and just pulling out all kinds of stuff. Like, I mean, I don't want to spoil it, but a lot of the books that I graded that were even on my on my walls, my background for this video, I pulled those out. Seven bucks, eight bucks. <laughs> really, really, really nice books that are worth hundreds, some even thousands now. So it's pretty crazy. Um, so I'll definitely make an episode about that comic shop. Oh, this is a nice cover too. This is 187. This, these are really hard to keep clean because this one here is also, it's got a stain on it, it looks like. So that's pretty gnarly. So yeah, you can see he's really, really coping now with with the death and everything. So it's pretty nuts. He's He's got voices going on in his head. So this is very iconic. And then I think the last issue that I have from Frank Miller run is 189. Another great cover. You know, Daredevil just basically evading a million arrows. Um, I don't recall who he's fighting. It looks like a samurai or a bunch of ninjas. So they're probably a bunch of hand guys. Um, but yeah, I mean, he's, he's just full force uh, vengeance going on. So the great thing with Frank Miller's run is that, you know, it led up to the death of Elektra and then some issues right after. But then there was a gap around issue, I believe it was 227 or so. Uh, he did the Born Again storyline. It was uh, maybe it was like five, six, seven issues uh, where it, that's probably the second most iconic uh, run. Now, especially well, from Frank Miller, that's his, I believe that was like one of his last runs. 
And you know, it's this beer pairing would actually go really, really well with that because that's just going to town. He's like, he's kind of going crazy. He even like, he's drinking a lot of alcohol during that time. Like he's just having a rough time. But then he definitely sees like a revelation and he kind of turns his life back around and is, you know, uh, basically being a superhero and everything. He, he has a, you know, like an epiphany and then he just kind of becomes back on track. <clears throat> Ooh, very nice one. And I'll probably be burping for a while. So definitely check out Born Again Storyline. You can get the trade paperbacks. It's issues 227 to 231. So it looks like four issues. So, what did you think of this week's episode? Do you agree with my beer pairing? Or do you have a better combination? Don't forget to comment, like this video, and hit the subscribe button for more original content. This is Steve from Cantu Comics, signing off.